Now, in order to use Figma, you have to go on figma.com, as you can see on the top left, and uh, we are going to be redirected to this uh, landing page. And uh, you can select uh, either try Figma for free, or you can click on uh, the sign up button on the top right. Uh, and uh, you're going to have the option to sign up with uh, either Google or email and password. Now, both of them are totally fine. So feel free to choose the one you're more comfortable with. And uh, after that, you're going to be redirected to the main Figma dashboard, which is going to be where we're going to continue on with the next video. Now let's create our first uh, Figma file. So as you can see, I'm in the main dashboard and I'm going to click on the very top right uh, element, uh, this plus icon, which is uh, the new file. Now, as you can see now, the file is loading up uh, and we are in our first uh, Figma file. So as you can see, the default uh, title is uh, untitled, but if you simply click on it, uh, you can title it to uh, whatever um, type you want. So I'm just gonna rename it to design. And uh, as you can see on the very left, uh, we have uh, this uh, layers and assets panel and also the page. Now we're going to start with the page. So we're just going to click on it uh, and as you can see, we are on page one. Now, pages are very useful. And by the way, you can scroll down this or so you're going to have more space for more pages. And uh, pages basically allow you to organize uh, multiple um, screens uh, and multiple parts of the projects uh, in uh, organized uh, sort of folders. You can see pages as folders and the content inside of it uh, it's going to be the actual documents uh, and uh, files. So we can create uh, two pages. And uh, if, for example, we add a rectangle by simply clicking over here, and I'm just going to click and hold and drag it. And uh, as you can see, we created our first rectangle. Now, one thing that you might, want, might have seen is that on the left, uh, we have this new rectangle one layer. And this is basically the layers panel. So these are very important concepts to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, you're going to work with pages and uh, layers all of the time. So essentially pages or your folders again, uh, and rectangle uh, in this case is uh, the actual file element. And uh, I can also go ahead and for example, create uh, a star over here and uh, we can change the color. And uh, as you can see, we have this uh, other element. Now, if I click uh, and move uh, the star and I put it below by simply clicking and holding with uh, the left mouse button and I put it below, um, you can see that uh, layers are actually in order of hierarchy. So if rectangle one is above star one, you're going to be able to see the rectangle first uh, while the star is going to be beneath it. Now, all of this uh, happened in page two, but if you click uh, on page one, as you can see, everything disappeared, but don't worry because uh, it really hasn't. We're just, uh, we just changed the, the page uh, where we're at. And uh, if we go back to page two by simply clicking on it, you're going to be able to see these uh, elements uh, again. Now, in order to make uh, this concept even more clear, I'm going to create a polygon over here. I'm just going to click uh, and hold and drag it with uh, the shift um, key. And basically, as you can see, we have this uh, triangle. Now, if I go to page two, we're going to see it again uh, our rectangle and our star. By the way, I just uh, deleted the rectangle by clicking on the return key on uh, uh, the keyboard. So as you can see, these are the first uh, things uh, uh, which I wanted to, to basically explain. So pages, layers, how they work uh, essentially, and uh, how to create uh, a new file, because these are going to be things that you're going to use uh, all of the time. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to move forward. So we're going to discuss about uh, artboards. So that's going to happen in uh, just a moment.
In this video, we're going to create uh, this uh, UI design uh, using Figma. We're going to start from scratch uh, and uh, by the end of it, uh, you're going to have uh, the exact uh, same website. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, we're back in Figma and uh, we just created a new file by clicking on the plus uh, and uh, the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to click uh, and uh, we're going to rename this to web app so that we can rename the file. And uh, now we're going to click on frame and we're going to select desktop and uh, we're going to select desktop 1440 pixels. Now, as we click on it, uh, you can see that this frame has been created. We're going to double click uh, on this name again and we're going to rename it to home and now we have our base to work on now let's use the text tool in order to create our very first text we're going to write here supreme and we're going to increase the font size incrementally using the shift and we're essentially going to find a measurement around these lines. We're going to make the logo um, black, or actually let's try bold so that it's not as big as this. And we're going to essentially duplicate this by using Command C and Command V. And by doing this, you can see that another layer has been created. I'm also going to show the keyboard viewer moving forward so that uh, you can uh, easily see all of uh, the elements and all of the keyboard strokes which uh, I'm using since we're going to use a bit moving uh, forward in this lecture. Now let's uh, make a smaller version of this text, probably going to go with 16 and we're going to make this one uh, medium. Now, just before we move forward with this, I'm going to select both the text layers. I'm going to write in Lato. Now, Lato is a free Google web font, which uh, you can find uh, um, directly on Google's website uh, very easily. Uh, simply search uh, for Lato on Google. And as you can see, the very first uh, query is fonts.google.com. So you can sim simply click on the here and uh, you're going to see this option to download family. Simply click on it and then uh, double click on the fonts uh, in order to install them in the system. You might need to restart Figma, but um, uh, afterwards uh, you should have it. So let's uh, continue over here. Let's write uh, the text, which uh, is going to be about I'm going to duplicate it one more time and one more time using the shift plus option key and then using command D and uh, this is going to save us just a little bit of time. So we're going to write here services, here we're going to write FAQ and here we're going to write contact us. Now let's select all of these uh, and we're going to use the distribute horizontal spacing in order to distribute them uh, um, horizontally and uh, now in order to move forward with a structure we're going to start implementing a layout grid we're going to click over here going to select columns I'm going to add uh, 12 columns add quite a bit of margin in uh, between uh, and this is going to serve us as a guide and this is useful especially for developers when they're going to implement the designs I'm going to make it uh, light gray so it doesn't interfere too much uh, visually and uh, here we go now the very next thing uh, that I would like to do is to move uh, this uh, all the way to the left we're going to have uh, two buttons so the very first one I'm going to use the rectangle tool right here it's going to be the sign up I'm going to center this. Now we're going to click on auto layout. And this uh, is now in auto layout. And you're going to see why this is super cool in just a minute. I'm going to duplicate this. And uh, so that we have two auto layout buttons. I'm going to write login. Now, as you can see, it automatically adapts uh, according to the um, 
to, to the auto layout setting which was uh, set up so that's that uh, and uh, probably going to make this uh, um, blue I'm going to make the text white we're going to make uh, this uh, with a stroke which is going to be white we're going to remove the fill now at this point we can start uh, making uh, this uh, uh, interface uh, in a dark mode so what we're going to do next uh, is we're going to select uh, a blue color we're going to simply make it all uh, uh, dark in appearance in order to get the mood we're also going to add a little bit of rounded corners and also I'm going to basically make the background just a little bit more towards the um, towards a grayish blue tint and here we go let's make this text white and we have it now let's write uh, here um, this is going to serve us as the main uh, headline let's duplicate this as well we're going to write some text a bit uh, of line height in between now let's also select these two auto layout elements we're going to round them up all the way all right now let's duplicate this we're going to write uh, get started now and uh, just below this uh, um, we're actually going to add uh, some uh, elements and uh, just before we continue we're actually going to go ahead and add uh, a um, a dashboard right uh, over here which uh, we're going to find from the web and uh, specifically from uh, uh, my dribble account have a lot of UI kits which uh, you can uh, um, basically um, see the single snippets so we're going to find uh, a image which is going to look good in this particular context maybe we're going to look at something around these lines uh, or even the one below with uh, this graph so we're simply going to select this on copy image I'm going to paste it uh, right here all right now as you can see the image is not uh, fixed perfectly so I'm going to make it just a little bit larger until I see that there's the breakpoint essentially and uh, here we go I'm going to just shrink it just a little bit we're going to add uh, some uh, uh, drop shadow which we're going to make uh, uh, with uh, this uh, color right here right here let's increase the blur all the way and let's also consider adding uh, a small stroke let's put it outside maybe let's make it a little bit lighter so that we have that nice uh, glow effect uh, going on let's round it up just a little bit less and uh, here we go all right now what we're gonna do next is we're going to create uh, a section with uh, some more elements and data and uh, I'm simply going to create a rectangle right here and uh, I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller actually let's bring 
this guy up and this one's going to be down just a bit now let's use the same corner radius and we're going to duplicate the color and just make it a little bit lighter so that we can see it uh, with more ease now all of these uh, I want to just make the the layout grid a little bit less visible since uh, it's quite in our face at the moment so I'm just going to keep it super light just like that and I'm going to now uh, divide this using a slash 4 and you cannot really see anything because it's uh, <laughs> it's basically in the same color but now you actually can and uh, basically what we created here is a division now I'm going to use a uh, shift plus option and uh, drag it and uh, use command plus D a few times in order to create uh, this division and uh, as you can see we can now kind of create uh, these uh, different distinctions and uh, this is going to serve us just as a, a way to divide uh, uh, some of these elements up now you're going all of this is going to make more sense in just a minute so we're going to write here some uh, some text some elements I'm going to go with uh, the bold in this specific instance now we're going to add some uh, values let's make this one actually let's duplicate this and let's make this one bigger and maybe also in black just a bit bigger as well and now what we're gonna do is uh, we're actually going to distance a bit these elements I'm going to duplicate this and uh, add uh, a percentage of variation I'm going to duplicate this uh, element uh, bring it right here and we're going to create uh, this the stag element and here we go all right I'll make it just a little bit smaller and group it all together and I think we're pretty much uh, good to go when it comes to this uh, section let's change the numbers just a bit at this point we're going to use a uh, nucleo icons which is uh, a uh, very nice plugin for or actually a software to drag and drop icons and I'm going to use Bitcoin drag it over here is the same color it's for visual consistency and uh, here we have our very first uh, element uh, that uh, we created all right now I'm going to basically note uh, that there is like 44 pixels on the left uh, and I'm going to duplicate this uh, just a few times and make sure that each and every one of the of these uh, has 44 pixels on the left and here we go all right so far so good now let's uh, go ahead and let's find some more um, values so we're going to go with Ethereum uh, for some reason 
there isn't really much uh, <laughs> going on so probably we're just going to or actually let's let's find let's see if uh, if we select all no we can't really find let's write in crypto let's see if we can uh, find some more uh, values right here or we're simply going to change uh, the initial one to be different uh, uh, other ones so maybe like this we're going to have a green one so let's just pretend that there are some uh, different elements and different like values uh, right here so we're just going to make this one up all right i'm also going to just delete this uh, so that uh, we can just have one of them increase the height just a little bit or actually let's do that a bit, a bit more let's bring this one down and uh, i think we're in good shape let's just change up these values a bit so that they are diversified all right and this one's going to be 1.2 this one's going to be 4.1 we're going to have 1.9 all right perfect so we have our base going for this home page and uh, we're going to continue and move forward with this in the very next video in this video, we're going to create uh, this uh, contact us uh, UI design from scratch uh, and we're actually going to leverage uh, some of the elements and some of uh, the design styles which we established in the very first video of the series uh, with uh, the home. So if you haven't checked out that video yet, uh, feel free to do so. And now without further ado, let's go right into the tutorial. All right, we're back in Figma and we're going to resume from where we left in the previous video. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to basically select this home and I'm going to copy and paste it so that we can have an exact same frame on the right. Now, in this case, we're going to basically um, change it to contact so that we can um, have a different name and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, start to remove uh, some of these elements since uh, we're going to essentially use the same base uh, when it comes to the top heading but the rest we're going to change it up so let's uh, go ahead and let's write uh, contact us and uh, we're going to have uh, some text right here saying something around the lines uh, of uh, feel free to reach out for any inquiries or questions you might have and uh, we're going to start adding some uh, input fields so the way this is going to work uh, is uh, essentially uh, well first of all let's uh, try and uh, make it uh, a um, central alignment so that we're going to have more space and more emphasis on these fields themselves we're also going to delete this uh, element below right here we're going to center the button just for the time being now we're going to access the rectangle tool in order to basically start adding some of these simple fields and as you can see we can still barely uh, see the layout grids so in order to increase uh, the visibility just going to turn up the color just a notch and by doing that we can easily see um, what can uh, actually be a better layout in this case so let's round it up just a little bit and i'm going to use uh, the same color 
of uh, the background just as a start. Then I'm going to make it a little bit lighter and uh, this is essentially going to help us to create these uh, input fields. Now let's duplicate this and as you can see by using this column grid we can easily uh, center it and have uh, um, them in an equal uh, distance. So overall I think uh, this uh, could work. Now I'm going to delete this uh, simply because I want to also add the text before I finally uh, duplicate it. So I'm going to bring up this text right here and I'm going to write here first name. We're going to also make this uh, auto width and I'm going to basically create a component out of it. So I'm going to click here on create component and here we're going to rename it to input slash text. All right, now let's uh, duplicate this component. I'm going to bring it right here. And I'm going to write uh, last name in the second box. All right, now let's uh, duplicate it um, one more time, or actually let's select all, both of these. We're going to duplicate it by using Shift plus Option or the Alt key. And I'm going to write here Emo. Then here we're going to have a repeat uh, emo. And let's add the, the asterisk since this is going to be compulsory. All right, now we have uh, these elements. We're going to duplicate this one more time. We're going to enlarge this element to cover all of this space so that we can actually add the text. Now, an issue that uh, you can easily see right here is that uh, in the master component, which is this component right here with the four dots compared to the single instances which are just outlined, we haven't really set uh, any constraint. So I'm going to set the constraint to the left and the top so that no matter how much uh, I stretch this element, the email text is always going to stay the same. And here I'm going to write uh, your message. All right, maybe let's make it just a little bit smaller and uh, that uh, will do. All right, I'm also going to add here a element, which is going to be the asterisk. I'm going to write here required. I'm going to select just the asterisk and use uh, the very same red color. I'm going to add it over here and uh, we're also going to duplicate this text. Actually, let's duplicate this one. And I'm going to write here, I have read, confirm the terms of agreement. Now let's select the terms of agreement. Let's make it bold. Let's change the color to be this blue so that uh, it looks like a hyperlink. Great, now that we have done that, we're going to also add a rectangle around it so that uh, we can uh, essentially um, have this uh, as a checkbox to be confirmed. I'm going to round up just a little bit and uh, here we go, we have uh, our basic uh, uh, form element. I'm going to bring the button right here and I'm going to write uh, submit or send message and uh, we pretty much have our uh, basic layout. Now I'm also going to add uh, just below this element uh, a map so that we can uh, easily see where is the location of uh, this place. And uh, as you can see, we have seven of roundedness right here. So <clears throat> basically what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to um, go on Google, I'm going to write maps, London, 
and uh, we are essentially going to grab a piece of this map so it's going to be pretty straightforward um, we're going to go ahead over here and then uh, we're going to essentially use the screenshot uh, app which uh, is default uh, um, it's a free um, app which is installed on the Mac by default you can use any other uh, screenshot uh, uh, service out there really doesn't really matter and now we're going to go back in Figma and paste uh, what we just took a screenshot of so as you can see this is looking uh, uh, pretty good one uh, tip that I have is uh, we can actually change the crop section right here and uh, yeah I think, uh, think overall this is working out we're also going to add some uh, some sort of uh, um, a address below just in case someone might want to actually use an address um, address this is going to be just going to make up an address or even better we can uh, go under plugins content reel and if you don't know uh, if you don't have content reel already you can simply go under browse plugins in community search for content reel and uh, under plugins you're going to see here just click on install and you're going to have it now that being said um, basically let's go back over here and uh, we're going to use the content reel plugin again it's taking a moment to load up as you can see you have uh, all sorts of different uh, um, addresses which you can uh, use and elements uh, for quick and fast uh, um, for adding them like quick and fast so let's just change this to London let's just pretend this is a, um, an avenue in London and uh, yeah content reel helped us quite a bit uh, <laughs> In, uh, also in past videos and um, that's that let's uh, add full address let's make a bold and uh, what we're gonna do is we're also going to add the auto width let's bring this one here and we're going to find uh, by using uh, nucleo icons again the address or location uh, um, we just need to find like a location pin or something and this can be also the one from Google material uh, this one right here would work pretty well so let's use the same color as we have right here and as you can see we have uh, our very full address below and uh, this would uh, pretty much uh, um, close this part of the tutorial <coughs> let's bring it on the left maybe one small touch that we can consider is actually adding a oval right here make it white and bring it below this icon group it together and we have our nice uh, little white uh, um, dot in the middle so this will be pretty much it uh, for this uh, uh, tutorial and uh, or for this video <laughs> and we're going to move forward with this website which uh, as you can see it's growing uh, uh, quite a bit in the next video in this video we're going to create this login and sign up UI designs from scratch using Figma. Now this is a part of a series of videos in which we're creating the app so if you haven't checked out the previous videos I would highly recommend you to do so but now without further ado let's jump right into the tutorial. Alright so we're back in Figma and now we're going to essentially duplicate this very screen right here over the right which we built in one of the previous videos and we're going to create the login sequence here and what we're gonna do as the very first thing is we're going to 
get rid of this element right here. We're going to bring this rectangle and we're going to delete uh, all of the other elements. And uh, we're going to write uh, over here um, login. And uh, we're going to make this text uh, just a little bit smaller. We don't want it to take as much visual emphasis as it, as it is now. And uh, we're going to essentially have uh, some call to action buttons. And uh, let's just frame this. So the very first one uh, is going to be um, simple login. Or actually, you know what? We're, got, we're actually going to create different buttons for this. So we're going to have a unique button for the logins. So maybe something around uh, these lines is going to work well. Let's make it white for the time being. Let's round it up just a little bit. We're going to duplicate this text, uh, bring it all the way up. Let's make it darker. And we're going to write here login with Google. Let's use the auto width. And we're going to bring it right here. Now, what we're going to do right after this uh, is we're going to go into Nucleo icons and uh, write uh, Google. And we're going to find uh, this uh, Google icon right here. You can also find it on uh, the web. Um, simply look uh, on <laughs> Google for Google icon and uh, you're going to find uh, plenty of them. Now, the great thing about this is that it's in SVG format, so it's really easy to basically uh, modify. So that's uh, uh, a good practice to uh, keep uh, indeed. Now, we have this uh, login with Google, and uh, now at this point, actually, let's not delete that one just, just yet. And uh, we're going to group this together and uh, probably let's try and round it up all the way and yeah, this looks pretty nice especially considering that we want to maintain a visual consistency with this button element right here all right so this is going to be the first button we're going to have the second button it's going to be logging with email and again let's use nuclear icons in order to find uh, a icon for the email. And you're going to go with uh, this one right here. Let's make it just a little bit smaller. Um, temporarily have a RAM issue. So I have like all of these things. Usually you're not going to, to see them. Um, it's just a temporary thing. It's just a visual thing really. So just keep this in mind. And uh, yeah, let's bring this uh, icon all the way right here. Probably one thing that we can consider is just bringing these uh, all the way to the center, and just having the icons on the left. Um, I'm not really too fond of this. I think the, the button is a little bit too big, so we're just going to squeeze it a little bit. And I think this is already looking better. All right. So we have, uh, oops, let's bring the icon inside of the button. We have uh, our main uh, call to actions here. So let's write over here. All right, add some uh, descriptive text so that uh, the user is going to be aware of uh, the context. Let's 
let's make this one bold. And uh, what we're gonna do, well, first of all, let's bring also this one over here. What we're gonna do here is we're going to do a hybrid of uh, two, um, basically two screens in one. I'm actually thinking if it's more beneficial to actually just divide them up and have them here and divide them up into screens. Yeah, probably that's that's what we're gonna do. Let's uh, make this screen a little bit smaller. And uh, just before we move on to the very next screen, uh, I'm going to find an image for the screen right here. So let's go under Unsplash. And uh, again, you can download Unsplash plugins uh, directly from uh, the Figma library, as I showed you in the previous video. Let's write something like trading or crypto. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting, but probably want something more around these lines. Mm. This looks pretty nice in given our context. It's so probably let's just keep this one right here. I'm going to have another one, which is going to be for the sign up. Hmm. Seems like the same image from before. So at this point we're just uh, having a look around uh, for images that could look good in this, given our context. <coughs> Maybe this one is, could be interesting. They want something darker for whatever reason I think it works better with the layout, but also not dark um, with no purple or blue tints. I actually want both. Hmm. Let's write crypto. Yes, let's add, uh, um, let's keep this one. I think it's cool. You're signing up for something where there's an opportunity to make uh, uh, some crypto. So I think it makes sense in the context. All right. We're going to create uh, some input fields right here. Or actually, we already created the components, so why not leverage them? Let's bring it right here. Let's make it smaller. Let's duplicate a few times. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit, get a more vertical space. I'm going to duplicate the repeat demo. So also this option right here, which is the reason you want to join. Let's give it just a little bit more, more space. All right, let's also grab this button. And let's also grab this element which we have uh, created previously. I'm 
let's shorten it up. And I think uh, we're good to go. right an application here and uh, yeah we're pretty much uh, sorted out uh, at this point and uh, in the very next video we're going to create uh, the main activity feed for this app all right so we're back into figma and uh, now we're going to create the dashboard design so the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these elements and we're going to copy and paste it using command c and command v I'm also going to bring here the keyboard so that you can see exactly each and every uh, key which uh, um, I use in combination. So let's uh, go over here and we're going to get, get rid of uh, all of this. And uh, we're going to create uh, a new um, color for the main fill. So we're going to use white in this instance. And uh, we're also going to use uh, a line item right here. So we're going to draw a line all the way in order to create uh, the very top uh, separation for the top level menu. Now I'm going to make this lighter and uh, probably something around uh, this could work well. I'm going to duplicate it so that uh, we have a duplicate of this by using command C and command V. And uh, let's bring uh, this line right here. So we can create uh, also the side menu. Now I want to create uh, a square in this section. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this line right here so that we can uh, have this nice uh, uh, separation. Maybe let's make it even more pronounced. I'm going to have a big side menu. And uh, that uh, I think will work well. Okay, now what we need to do is to actually drag and drop one of these text elements, which uh, is going to be uh, a lot regular. Again, it's a free Google web font, which you can download on the Google website. And uh, you can simply Google for, for that. You're going to find it right away. And now we're going to create a dark version of the text. Let's bring it here and we're going to write uh, overview let's make uh, this one bold let's duplicate this we're going to write reports let's bring it more on the right now let's use nucleo icons again which is uh, one of my favorite uh, um, resources in order to find the icons we're going to write uh, our world and uh, we're going to leverage one of these uh, um, icons right here. Probably let's go with this one. And the reports. And let's select uh, um, one of these really. Maybe this one will, will do the job. Actually, let's also use this one instead of the previous one for the overview. Let's bring them right here to the center. Now let's make uh, both of them uh, uh, bigger using the scale tool. And here we go. All right. Now I would like to make these uh, icons lighter. Let's bring more this towards the left so that they are more attached and now let's also search for a search icon and we just need something basic here something like that would work and uh, also a filters why not 
<clears throat> All right. Let's search for a Nemo icon as well. And then we're going to add uh, um, another icon and uh, let's make these uh, ones bigger in the meantime. So like this. Let's unframe them. And let's make them uh, light gray. Perfect. All right, so let's bring it all the way to the right. Now we're also going to create uh, an oval shape, just like this one. And uh, let's use uh, the plugin called uh, Content Reel in order to find an avatar. Let's go under Images and uh, yeah, let's try this one right, right here. It's uh, quite light uh, and uh, like the balance in the composition. And uh, here we go. All right, uh, now that we have uh, our base uh, top level menu, we need to create uh, the uh, menu on the left. So again, we're just going to drag and drop uh, a few different uh, icons which uh, might suit well a side menu and uh, let's write something like dashboard i think that is going to yield some interesting icon choices and uh, let's try something different um, this one right here so it, it's a little bit too big at the moment for sure and uh, let's write also analytics and so you can see the main theme here we're just like uh, going around searching for some uh, some interesting icons that could work well in uh, any given context it's a fun icon like this one here and uh, probably want to avoid these horror related icons in a in such a platform let's add this one and uh, these ones here not too fond about let's add one of these okay so we have our basic icons. Now again, what we want to do is to try and uh, make them uh, all alike. So I'm going to set the constraints of proportions. I'm gonna make them 20 in width. Actually, let's make it <coughs> just a little bit smaller. So and maybe 18 uh, is gonna do the job. Let's unframe these. Uh, let's make them gray. And let's uh, deceive it vertically. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a trick. So let's bring uh, this icon right here. Deceive it vertical spacing again. As you can see, we can create this nice uh, um, spacing in between the icons by using this vertical spacing just a few times. All right, uh, I'm actually going to Add it even more so that it's even more pronounced. And probably for, for these icons, I'm gonna make them uh, just a bit bigger since we have a lot of space. And I want uh, these icons to be more pronounced uh, in uh, the interface as a whole. All right, so we have uh, our base going for this, uh, for this dashboard. And uh, what we're gonna do next uh, is uh, we're going to actually add uh, some sort of uh, a logo on the top. So I'm going to create this circle right here. And uh, I'm going to make the fill white. Let's add a stroke. Just like this one. And I'm probably going to go with a linear gradient for this one and create uh, um, 
some some color combination which is a mix between a, a light blue and uh, a darker blue so I think this is interesting let's make it just a little bit smaller and I'm probably going to just duplicate this this line right here and make it smaller as well and just add uh, little divider line in between uh, the logo and uh, the main icons so we can keep that uh, visual differentiation between uh, these elements all right we have to select all of this center it just to be sure all that is uh, um, pretty much set and uh, we're actually going to go ahead and select this element right here so i'm gonna make it this blue i'm going to increase the stroke just so that it's more visible i'm going to make it the same and then and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a rectangle around this bring it all the way to the bottom make it blue and then give it 10% opacity all right now I probably want to select both of these and just make it bigger um, simply because I want to give it more emphasis visually and also a nice touch that we can uh, do is to actually add a linear gradient which is going to go from here to here all right, quite happy with this and um, how it's uh, evolving essentially. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to add a logout section. So let's uh, search for <coughs> logout. Let's bring this icon right here. You can also use the Google material icons um, if you don't see in these ones in Nucleo. Uh, some of these are premium so it's totally fine or you can simply leverage uh, the source file and uh, use the icons from the source files so that's going to be an easy uh, way to basically overcome that all right um, now another thing that uh, we want to add uh, is some sort of a notification icon for the mainly for the emails so let's go over here let's add the notification icon color <coughs> and uh, also a small arrow which is going to be useful for the main uh, um, top level menu so let's actually go with this one I'm going to copy this paste in uh, this arrow and I'm going to bring uh, all of this more towards the right let's zoom out in order to kind of maintain uh, the overall sight uh, on uh, this and uh, now let's uh, go on uh, and uh, let's create uh, the basic structure for the for what is about to come so it's going to be the main top section that we're going to have uh, three elements right here and then we're going to have uh, the master component uh, here on the bottom all right, and this is going to serve us uh, as uh, a base uh, in order to work around this. So the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring uh, this element here. So we have the text and uh, now let's make it uh, in the same color. Actually, we're going to make it even darker in this case. We're going to write uh, something around the lines of the world's uh, leading uh, 
then we're going to write uh, crypto um, software let's make uh, all of this uh, capitalized let's also make it black and uh, just a bit smaller Increase the line height just a little bit, and also this element right here. I'm going to add uh, some text. Just going to remove a few. By the way, I'm using uh, a text in order to <laughs> add some snippets of text. I'm adding some, uh, basically some some gibberish text, just to kind of get the feeling uh, overall. And uh, I'm also going to add uh, a call to action of some sort. Um, let's probably go with this one right here. Or actually, let's use these two. Let's make the text also a little bit smaller. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one blue. And the stroke of this one blue as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So. <clears throat> Let's change this one to start now and this one to view exchanges. And by doing that, uh, we have uh, our basic uh, text going for this um, for this dashboard. All right, now it's time to go ahead and create uh, these uh, elements right here. So overall, I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller and uh, probably going to go with uh, an approach around the lines of uh, creating one. And then we're going to simply duplicate these, uh, these elements um, along the canvas. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So let's go over here. Let's round up the corner. Let's add a stroke. The fill is going to be white. And uh, or actually, let's just add a drop shadow. <coughs> let's make it quite pronounced. I'm going to use some of these uh, colors as the base. Yeah, something around these lines could work well. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Maybe just a bit darker. All right. I'm going to lock this layer. So I'm going to duplicate this element right here and bring it over all the way here, bring it all the way to the top. <coughs> and uh, let's write here Bitcoin. I'm going to drag and drop uh, this uh, Bitcoin element. And I'm going to assign it a color like this one and let's write uh, the text so Bitcoin 
That's a little bit too big. Let's make it maybe 14. And here we're going to write the variation. <clears throat> so 5.2%. We're going to grab one of these uh, elements right here, which we previously created. Bring it all the way here. All right. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to add uh, some sort of uh, a graph. Let's try and create uh, <coughs> regular intervals for this. I'm going to kind of like ballpark the sizes. It's not going to be perfect. But as long as we're there, more or less, uh, we're good. All right, let's make this Bitcoin just a little bit smaller. <coughs> Bring it there. And let's add uh, a few very small, tiny bit, tiny ovals in the graph. Let's bring it one here and one here <clears throat> and another one right over here okay so I'm noticing that for example this one is not as pronounced so I'm gonna have to add another one here and we are good to go now pen tool again let's uh, draw on top of this and the reason being is uh, going to make sense in just a second um, right we need these two guys to connect so bring it here and boom have a connection let's remove uh, the stroke let's add a fill which is going to be this one right here and let's add a linear radiant let's make this one very light and uh, we have uh, our in the style that we were looking for all right so we have uh, our basic graph over here and uh, we also have uh, our bitcoin element right on top let's make this one bold and let's uh, write a value just 07 september let's make it light All right, so far, so good. Now, at this point, I'm going to select this element, unlock it, and group all of this together, remove these two elements, bring this one here on the right, make a duplicate here on, 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 the, on the left, <laughs> on the right, right and left. <laughs> so, all right, so good. Now, I'm also noticing that these should be changed. Let's change the stroke, being this value right here. And uh, we're pretty much set. Um, I would say that at this point, uh, we are ready to move forward in uh, the um, uh, part two of the video. In this video, we're going to create uh, this dashboard uh, from scratch. Now, I want to remind you that this uh, is the second part uh, of uh, the video. So if you haven't checked out the previous part, uh, feel free to do so since uh, we're going to build the foundation. And in this video, we're going to finish uh, and wrap everything up. So we're back in Figma and now we're going to continue where we left off in the previous video. 
So the very first thing that uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to add this uh, 3D element which uh, is uh, from uh, a kit by LS Graphics called Blam. And as you can see they have like all sorts of these uh, 3D elements uh, and uh, it can be really useful whenever you're dealing with uh, uh, any given project uh, to consider using uh, other assets uh, um, and they can, they can be both free and paid. Uh, um, it really doesn't uh, um, matter. Of course, the free ones, you're going to need to check the licenses, especially if it's a commercial project. But generally speaking, what uh, is most important uh, is that the general style fits within the goals uh, of uh, that particular client and uh, uh, UI design. So as you can see, we just added them uh, here. I just created this nice little composition. We're going to um, basically bring it to a place where uh, it's going to be uh, somewhere around uh, these lines. So, all right, now we're going to continue and uh, we're going to create uh, a few variations of uh, the colors for these Bitcoins at items. And as you can see, we're going to need to zoom in just a little bit in order to change uh, the color of the inner part and uh, I'm going to select all of them right away and I'm going to try maybe some other color uh, something which is not not too uh, not too light actually maybe let's try and uh, just give it the same color as the um, as the main uh, green of the stag and uh, let's actually go ahead uh, and just uh, mix it up just a little bit I don't really want uh, like the exact same color uh, to be that one. So, okay, I think we're, we're good to go. And uh, now what uh, we're going to do next, uh, and actually <laughs> as I'm really looking at it, I think that uh, uh, I just had this uh, moment of, <laughs> of thinking where maybe this color could actually work uh, even better. So it's even more in line with the usual Bitcoin branding that we're used to look at. All right, so now the very next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a graph element uh, here below. And uh, the first thing that uh, um, we're gonna lay out is uh, the main line. So let's go over here, let's create some dashed lines. And uh, let's uh, use the same color as this line right here. And as you can see, we have our nice dashed lines. We're going to create just a few of these uh, in order to get uh, the main theme. And probably let's just bring this one up just a little bit. And uh, here we go. I'm also going to add uh, a section called uh, overview. Let's make it quite smaller. And essentially, I think that's going to cover it. All right. Now let's uh, start adding some uh, text elements. So we're going to leverage these ones right here. Let's go ahead uh, and write, uh, example, zero. Let's bring it all the way down to the very bottom. I'm going to right line this. I'm going to duplicate this just a few times. <coughs> and I'm going to make sure it's all well distributed. All right, now let's start writing 100, 200, 300, 400, and uh, 500. And uh, here we have uh, <coughs> our main values. I'm going to use the same color here and uh, make it just a little bit darker. And also make the text a little bit smaller. And uh, here we go. 
Now let's go ahead, let's uh, create uh, a few <coughs> date references <coughs> over here. And we're going to start adding these uh, on the X axis. All right. We're going to write uh, different uh, names. Perfect. Let's make it a little bit darker as well. And let's bring these guys just a notch on the left. And uh, we definitely have a good base going. Now we can start with the graph. So as you start, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, some um, oval right here and uh, we're going to essentially add some uh, blue color on the left on the stroke and uh, some white uh, on the inside and uh, let's essentially go like this using shift plus option key and uh, also command D as you can see, with this combination, you can uh, easily create uh, all of these different dots. So again, it's literally um, shift plus option key, left mouse button, you drag it around, and then uh, command D. So very easy. Now let's make these uh, ellipses just a little bit smaller. Maybe 12, yeah, it's gonna do. Now let's just uh, move them around. And this is going to create uh, a nice uh, um, graph variation. All right, now what we want to do is uh, essentially creating uh, a graph which spans uh, around uh, all these lines. We're using the pen tool simply because it's the most uh, um, just <laughs> the best tool to recreate this. And now let's go back uh, to the original. Let's close it. Is it closed? Yep, it is. And that's uh, all good. So we can now create a fill, which is going to be this blue. And the fill is going to have a linear gradient, just like the previous one. And this first element is going to be very, very light. Now we probably want to remove the stroke. One thing that uh, we're going to Give it a try and do here, which I have never tested live, but I want to give it a shot. The is essentially using uh, the drop shadow in order to create the top stroke. As you can see, this works uh, like a charm. <laughs> All right. Now we have an issue when it comes to these um, dots. Um, essentially need to set them on the very top so in the layers panel so as i did that you can see that now it's uh, working just fine now technically if you want to increase the um the stroke by a bit i just simply move the y-axis of the drop shadow and here we have uh, our dashboard design uh, pretty much ultimated. 
Um, another thing that we can consider doing is uh, adding a, a selected state in order to show the developers how would that look like. We're going to duplicate one of these rectangles, bring them here, and I'm going to bring this layer all the way to the very top in the Figma uh, document. And I'm going to select this color, make a very dark version of it. All right, I'm going to duplicate this one as well, bring the layer all the way to the top using option command and the top arrow key, make a white. And uh, here we have uh, our exact uh, <coughs> data in this uh, nice little popover. Let's round it up even more. And uh, yeah, we pretty much uh, have it. Maybe you can add like a drop shadow or something just to indicate this, the state. Let's make it one step smaller and uh, yeah we pretty much have it so we're gonna move on in the next video and uh, clean up uh, a lot of the stuff create the prototype and uh, yeah basically wrap this up this is going to be an exciting video since we're going to create the prototype of uh, this uh, website and the app that we created so as the very first thing uh, we're going to rename the frames so as you can see how, uh, how we have it laid out here, it's home, we have the contact page, the login, sign up and dashboard. And this is really important since uh, when dealing with prototypes, uh, it's just going to make the workflow more clean and easy. Now, in order to create uh, your very first prototype, simply click on the prototype section here on Figma. And uh, the very first connection that we're going to create uh, is between the home page and the contact page. Now, in order to do this, uh, uh, we're going to need to create uh, a hotspot. So as you can see, as we hover over a single layer, you're going to see this uh, uh, blue dot, which uh, essentially enables us to create the connection. If we simply click and drag it all the way to the contact, you can see that now there is this connection. And as we release, uh, we're going to have our very first uh, prototype uh, uh, connection. So the moment that uh, we, we release uh, and we have this uh, uh, first connection, you're going to see the interaction details uh, uh, section pop up. And uh, this uh, essentially tells uh, the prototype what happens uh, if uh, you um, click on this element. Now there is a uh, a few options actually, and it's not only clicks. Uh, this can be on click, on drag, while hovering, while pressing. We're going to explore these uh, in uh, just a moment, but for this uh, specific instance, uh, what we need uh, is uh, simply on click. So basically telling Figma, hey, when, once you click on contact us, bring me to this page. And uh, you can do it instantly or with some animations which uh, I want to show you live with, since it's going to be easier to explain. Now let's uh, click on the play button right here. And uh, as you can see, a new tab is going to open up. And this is going to be the tab of our prototype. So as you can see, I can uh, uh, literally see the, the website. And uh, the moment I click on contact us, boom, I'm redirected to the contact us page. Now I also want uh, another connection with uh, the logo that brings me back to the previous page. So in order to do that, you can simply select this and uh, have it uh, go back to the very first one. So as we go back, you can see that this is updated in, in uh, real time. And uh, the moment I click on the logo, I'm going to be redirected to the previous one. Now, let's say that we want to add uh, some sort of uh, an effect. And by the way, if you simply uh, deselect uh, any artboard and click outside, you can see all, of the, all of these contact points. So they're always uh, readily available. 
Now, the moment I click here and uh, I use uh, another um, uh, animation such as Dissolve, you can see how this changes the transition. So you have more of a uh, Dissolve effect compared to the fast uh, and the instant one. So definitely something to consider. We also have the Smart Animate, which uh, is uh, a other option which uh, sometimes uh, it can work really well but uh, it really depends on the layers and uh, the transition so you can see how for example in this case it's kind of like creating an animation based on its best guess in particular instance we're simply going to go with uh, the dissolve and we're going to do the same for the logo now we can actually move on and uh, go ahead and uh, connect it to the login and the sign up flows. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to select the login, but you can start seeing uh, a problem. You have to create uh, different uh, elements and connections uh, between uh, all of the different menus in the screens. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to do something smarter which uh, is going to take just a, a moment extra at the beginning but it's going to save us some time so we're going to create uh, a component out of this menu right here and in order to do that we're going to simply select it all and uh, create uh, a component right here now this is the master component and uh, i don't want the master component to be here but i want it to be somewhere outside uh, and uh, ideally in another page as you create more components and i'm going to duplicate this using shift plus the option key but you can also simply use command c and command v now as we have our menu here we're going to go ahead and delete this other menu and we're going to use command c and then select the frame and then using command v in order to um, add it in the same um, direction. Now, why we've done that? S simple, because the moment that uh, you use the master component, which is this component right here, and you start using uh, the prototyping features, such as this one, which is the on-click dissolve, and we're going to say when you click on the logo, it goes to the home page. When you click on the contact us, it's going to go here, and uh, going to keep the dissolve. And then once you click on the sign up button, it's going to redirect to the sign up, which is this one right here. As you can see, you can create connection points, even if it's very far away. And uh, when you click on the login, it's going to connect to this one here. Now, as you can see, magic is starting to happen because uh, this single component is going to essentially enable us to do these decisions once. And in each and every screen where this component is present, these uh, animations are going to, to apply or these prototyping features are going to apply. So we need to substitute this component also here. So we need to get rid of this menu, add it over here. And we're going to, do, to need to do the same in the sign up. Now this is going to make sense. It looks super complicated, but the concept is very simple. You simply set these things in one component and in each and every screen, you're going to have the same exact principles. So let's give it a shot. We're here, we're back in Figma. And as I click on contact us, you can see that uh, I can literally uh, go ahead and literally just uh, select uh, all of these uh, and go between screens uh, in a very easy way and i just set it up uh, once so it's a really cool and uh, useful system to easily save hours of work potentially so the moment we've uh, finished this one up we're going to do on send application we're going to say that we're going to uh, send them over here it's not like the most traditional uh, ux flow for a SaaS company but in this case it'll do and uh, we're going to do the same also for this one 
Now, as you can see here, there is a problem because uh, as I try to select the button, I have this entire group, which uh, we had over here. So I would need to create a connection on uh, the dashboard, but the problem is that anywhere you click uh, in this group, uh, it would uh, redirect to the dashboard and we totally do not want that. So what we want to do is to ungroup this and simply select uh, our, or actually group uh, all the elements of the single button that we want to create the connection. Now, another nice tip uh, is that you can literally uh, start dragging and going on the right. As you can see, you can move around in Figma while having that connection point uh, on the hold. So again, we're going to keep all of these to dissolve is is out uh, and 300 milliseconds of the animation. That's totally cool. And uh, now as we go back in our prototype and uh, going login, for example, you can see how we can access uh, the main dashboard again. Now you would uh, ideally want to create the connection point also here to go back to the main uh, uh, home page so that you can click and just go back very easily. So this is pretty much it. This is prototypes in a nutshell. Um, you can ideally also select uh, the devices and also the, the background uh, if you want to, for example, a, a white background or even a background like the one that we, are, we have here. You can do it very easily in Figma in this prototyping mode. So this would wrap it up and in the next video we're going to clean up the files and uh, essentially have it ready for production. All right, in this video we're going to go ahead and clean up the file in order to basically have it ready for the developers. Now we're going to go back into the design stage and uh, when it comes to cleaning up the files there's actually a few philosophies um, since this was a smaller project, uh, we're doing the cleanup uh, at the very end, uh, since I know that uh, it's not going to be a project where there's going to be much expansion going on. However, if you're working on a brand new project, it's a good practice to start uh, doing this uh, from uh, the very first screens so that uh, you're essentially not going to uh, have to duplicate uh, your efforts uh, throughout. And it really depends. There's no really right or wrong way to do it. It's just a matter of uh, conveniency and what uh, is most ideal for that specific project. So we're going to go and uh, start from this component right here. Um, I'm not going to go and uh, basically group this uh, all too much. Um, I think I'm just going to keep these uh, and rename these as button and uh, this one as well, button outline and uh, this is going to essentially be renamed uh, throughout uh, the project as uh, the header. So I'm just going to select uh, all of these elements and I'm going to press command plus R as you can see, this uh, dialog uh, section opens up. We're going to write in a header. As you can see, the preview is showing that uh, everything is going to be renamed to header. So header, header, header. So just use command plus R and uh, you're going to have access to this menu once multiple selected options, uh, multiple selected um, elements <laughs> basically are selected. You got, you got my point. So let's go ahead over here and we're going to do a, a light cleanup to rename this to button, group it together. So this one is going to be renamed to dashboard. And as you can see, I'm using uh, um, the command plus uh, R again in order to basically rename this or actually the previous one was shift um, was basically the same. So you can see that if you have just one layer selected and use command plus R, you're going to quickly select uh, and be able to rename the layer. But if you select multiple options, use command plus R, you're going to rename this in bulk. So just a clarification on this. Now let's uh, group uh, all these together. Actually, let's uh, rename these uh, to Bitcoin. So again, Command plus R. And uh, I'm going to group this together. I'm going to write selected. 
and I'm going to create an entire group using command plus G and uh, rename this to bitcoins. All right, um, I'm going to rename this to text. As you can see here on the layers panel, you can also double click, you're going to be able to rename this. So just a, a really light, uh, um, a real, a real light uh, um, ordering we're doing here. So just double checking and everything is good. Okay, here we have all of the input fields. Here we have this element, I'm going to rename it to rectangle. And I'm going to group both of these, rename them to terms. We have button here. I'm going to group all of this using command plus G and then command plus R contacts. This one's going to be maps. And this one below, it's going to be grouped all together. It's going to be called address. Now let's go over here. We're going to write image. And I'm going to do the same for this one here. And let's uh, <coughs> essentially select these items command plus R, let's call them buttons. And I'm going to call it the login section. Now let's uh, do the same here for the terms. Let's group it together. And uh, or actually sign up. It's going to be what we're going to call it. And uh, here we have uh, nice clean layering. And now let's uh, tackle the main dashboard. So as you can see here, we have just a bunch of um, Vicons. So I'm going to tackle those first. I'm going to call it icon. And then uh, this one's going to be line. This one's going to be called selection. And this one is a line as well. And this one is a line too. So let's group all of this in one. Let's call it side menu. And uh, here we go. Now let's tackle these top ones. Again, let's start with the icons first. And for whatever reason, having this uh, shadow, <laughs> which is kind of interfering. I'm going to bring uh, this device element all the way to the bottom, oops, so that it doesn't interfere. So we can select uh, these icons. I mean, it's <laughs> still around, but yeah. Let's just select these icons, name them to icons. And these ones are going to be in the left menu. And this one here is going to be called the right menu. And here we go. All right. Now let's uh, tackle this section here. Again, let's rename these to buttons. And here we're going to basically rename these uh, to main bitcoins. And what we can do is uh, we, we can actually go ahead uh, and select uh, all of these uh, ellipses and clean them up. Going to rename them to oval. So as you can see, we can easily, very fast, uh, um, just rename all of these layers. Going to do the same also for these lines right here. Um, Hmm. For whatever reason, it was hard to select, but never mind. Just going to go from here. So you can tackle between uh, the, the main view and also the 
layers panel on uh, the left, as you can see. And this one is going to be graph. And let's rename the backgrounds. All right. So I think these are pretty well off. Maybe let's change the name of this group. And also this vector. I don't want to have uh, number values like going around for no reason. And uh, here we go. All right, now it's time to group these together and these together. This one's going to be dates. This one's going to be numbers. And I'm going to group all of this into one single unit called overview. and uh, we are pretty much set. So at this point, once uh, everything is uh, cleaned up, you're ready to send this over to fellow team members and developers. And the way that the developers can easily access the file is that you can share, you can click on the share button and you can enter their, their emails. Now granted, you can choose if they can only view and they will be able to access the HTML and CSS uh, and also download the assets uh, such as the images or the icons if you give them view only access. And that is usually what I do whenever I work uh, in Teams. And uh, you can also give them uh, edit access, but they can uh, um, modify things in your design. So just be aware of that. You can enter their emails and you can enter multiple emails separated by a comma to do it fast. And then you click on send invite. They will receive an email notification. They need to accept the invite and create uh, a account uh, and access Figma link with that account. Very important because if they access, for example, from their mobile and they're not, uh, um, they, they're not uh, logged in in their account, it's not gonna work. Now, that being said, once you're in Figma, you can, uh, what I usually like to do is to create a one or two minute video and uh, show them around how to like move around in Figma and uh, essentially show them this uh, very important tool for the developers, which is called the inspect mode. Now, inspect mode allows them to view all of the properties. So for example, as you can see here, as I selected the text, I'm going to see all of the properties of the text in detail and also the CSS code that they, they can easily uh, just grab and uh, copy and paste essentially. They can see all of the colors. So the moment they click on uh, these elements, they're going to see pretty much everything that they need to know in order to implement the design. And uh, they can also go over here, select an element and export it in uh, whatever uh, file or dimension that they prefer. So this is pretty much it uh, when it comes uh, to, uh, to the developer hands off. Um, I always like also to maybe have a conversation with them, a uh, phone call, just go over everything, just to be sure that everything is good. And um, yeah, this is <laughs> pretty much it. See you in the next one. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, how developers can uh, use uh, Figma in order to get extract the assets uh, and uh, also explore all the CSS codes and uh, relevant information for them. So in one of the sections of this course, uh, we created this uh, web app design and uh, we're going to use it uh, as a way to explain all of these concepts. So one thing that I do usually when I'm working with uh, teams and this can be with one developers and I worked uh, all the way up to teams with 30 developers is uh, I'm going to share the Figma project with them and uh, I'm going to give them uh, uh, view access. So in, a, in another video, we already um, explored the share option, the options. So you can see the details in a, that specific video, but 
just to give you an overview, I'm going to uh, enter their emails and they can uh, access and create uh, a Figma account, which it takes uh, uh, two minutes. And uh, I can also copy the link directly with them. And basically once uh, they access the Figma account, uh, um, I would usually shoot uh, a quick video explaining them uh, what I'm about to show you right now. So as you can see, we, for the most part in this course, uh, we only worked uh, in the design tab. However, if you see on the very right, we also have a code tab. And uh, if you click on it uh, and you start uh, selecting different elements, uh, you can see that uh, on the right, uh, we can see some uh, really useful uh, coding, coding options and uh, actually coding informations, so, such as the font family, font style, font weight, uh, size, line height. So these are really useful for the developers. And uh, as you can see, as uh, I'm moving around uh, the different, uh, uh, and selecting different elements, uh, you can see that uh, in this view, I also have information when it comes to the numbers, uh, uh, the layout, the spacing in between elements. So this is also information which are quite useful for the developers. And when it comes to extracting assets uh, such as icons, um, it's, re it's very easy on their part. They can simply uh, go ahead here in the design tab, uh, click on export, uh, and uh, pretty much select uh, whatever file format which they need. Uh, but usually what, one thing that I like to do is to already prepare these assets for them and send them over um, either via InVision or directly in a folder. So for example, I, I know that I want the icons in a SVG format since it's vector format and uh, I'm going to already prepare the SVGs for them. Uh, I can also rename it directly from here. So this can be item one and uh, so on. And uh, this is basically, um, these are basically two options which makes uh, uh, life uh, much easier for both parties. And then usually when I'm working with, de with developers, if they have any questions, I'm always happy to hop on a call with them or I can even record a quick Loom video uh, in order to explain uh, these things uh, uh, directly with them. But for the most part, it should be pretty straightforward. So yeah, that's pretty much it though, when it comes to uh, working with developers and uh, uh, giving them access to all of the CSS coding and uh, um, images and uh, icons. And by the way, uh, we went through the icons, how to export the, I the, the icons, but the same is, is exactly true for an image. So if we have, for example, an image right here, um, I can simply uh, tell them to export it directly from here in PNG or JPEG, or I can uh, already prepare these files and export them and send them over um, in a folder or uh, via InVision or some other tool like that. So this is pretty much it for this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. In this video, we're going to talk about the Figma auto layout features. Now the auto layout features are really useful in some scenarios. So let's go ahead and uh, I just created this new document and uh, I'm going to create uh, a button. So let's add a rectangle. Let's add uh, just a little bit uh, of uh, border radius and I'm going to add a text inside, which is going to be button um, uh, using Roboto, but you can use uh, any uh, type that uh, you want uh, just for uh, getting the, the point. So I'm going to make the color of this button blue and uh, I'm also going to group it. So just select it and then uh, command plus G and uh, we have our button and uh, we're going to um, do one thing now which is uh, basically we're going to select it and uh, click on the very right uh, auto layout. Now, as you can see on the very left, uh, now this uh, button has been uh, um, created inside a frame. So basically we have uh, a frame uh, and uh, let's uh, create a second button over here. So both of them are in the frame. Now, one thing that we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to select both buttons 
and then uh, as you can see uh, we're going to have to add a third auto layout so what's going on here is essentially we we set figma this first button is a frame the second button is a frame and they're both uh, um, grouped inside an auto layout feature so what uh, what advantage that is uh, this giving us so as you can see uh, at the moment uh, if we start uh, typing uh, inside the button the button basically auto resizes uh, by itself which is something which is pretty cool so basically the auto layout is grouping the buttons or the a any element really inside of it and uh, it's using a layout which uh, uh, is either going to be horizontal or vertical and uh, as you can see we have options to basically add the vertical or horizontal padding directly from here so for example I add the um, vertical padding you can see that more padding is being applied vertically I can also adjust the space between the elements from here so as you can see this is uh, uh, something which uh, can really help us in some uh, scenarios and as you can see here we have the option between auto width uh, and uh, fixed width now the great thing about auto layout is that let's say that we add uh, for example a image to this uh, to this composition or or a shape of uh, you know whatever uh, whatever type of shape um, if i go over here and select this rectangle and I put it inside the auto layout uh, frame three. You can see that now it's uh, going. This rectangle is part uh, of the composition, so I can simply move it around, uh, and I can also easily move these elements uh, and uh, basically use the auto layout feature uh, both horizontally and or or vertically. Um, and uh, this is going to to help quite a bit. Uh, we're working with uh, certain type of projects where you have maybe multiple elements in uh, in compositions and uh, you know things of that nature. So yeah, this is pretty much it when it comes to auto layout. And I'll see you in the next video. Video we're going to talk about uh, what uh, you can do if you need uh, some uh, extra help uh, in uh, Figma. If you're not don't remember where an item is uh, or an element. Uh, and uh, basically we're just going to cover this real quick so let's get right into it so when you need some help with uh, anything in figma maybe you remember something i would just uh, go here on the top right help uh, or alternatively you can use uh, the top left uh, menu item in order to search for something so if, for example um, i don't remember where some layer uh, options are I can simply start clicking uh, typing layers and you can see that uh, these uh, elements are going to appear on the go and uh, let's do the same here for components as you can see I'm seeing uh, different components and the best thing uh, is that I can even see exactly where in this menu item uh, I'm going to find the result of that uh, search query so this is really useful and um, another thing that uh, you can consider doing is going on uh, uh, simply google figma help uh, and uh, the very first resource is going to be the help.figma.com and basically over here you can search for all sorts of things and uh, you're going to basically be redirected to articles and uh, the relevant doc documentations and even community uh, questions and answers so you can sort it by uh, all type articles and community from here and uh, as you can see for example in components i click here on name and organize components and i'm being redirected to uh, a very comprehensive page where we're covering most uh, of the elements here now another cool thing uh, to consider is uh, you can is to join the figma community so if you go on a spectrum.chat slash figma you're going to be redirected to this screen uh, where which is essentially a figma community it's very active there's at the moment 200 members online there's 26,000 plus members and uh, it's a, a really cool way in order to access uh, some uh, uh, information and troubleshoot you can access the different channels by simply clicking 
here on the very left uh, side menu and as you can see there are questions and uh, answers that uh, um, the community uh, has given and that uh, has added so it's really useful and uh, of course you can also uh, feel free to join uh, Facebook groups uh, but uh, usually these uh, are uh, more than enough and um, yeah that's pretty much it for this video hope it was helpful and we'll see you in the next one